In a jam, Palmer Stadium with Cornell favored, the Princeton Tiger goes on a rampage. Trouble begins in this Ivy League clash. Hasmair skirts the Cornell end for a touchdown. For Cornell, it's the worst trouncing in five years and makes the Tiger leading contender for the Ivy League crown. Kazmaier, the swivel hip junior from Ohio, sparks the Princeton powerhouse and personally accounts for both touchdowns in the first half. Razzle-dazzle coming up. Kazmaier tosses to Reed, who lapples to Vanell, and the man-eating Tiger turns the fourth quarter into a rout. Next play, and fullback Jack Davison crashes over, and it's 20 to nothing, Princeton. Cornell takes to the air, striving to avert a shutout, but Paverto intercepts and carries it deep into big red territory. There's no holding that Tiger, and McCandless goes the distance to make it. 27 to nothing, what a powerhouse! Knoxville, Tennessee, and highlights of the Alabama-Tennessee game in the first quarter. Avenger's first pass backfires, with Atkins of the Vols grabbing it, but he's hit hard and fumbles the ball. Helms recovering for Alabama. From the nine, Lutz boots it through the uprights for a field goal, and the Crimson Tide leads by three points. Substitute fullback Al Kozar almost single-handedly picks up ten yards. Then, as the quarter changed, it's Kozar again, going across to give Tennessee the lead. 50,000 spectators are getting their thrills worth. In the third period, Alabama fights to recover the lead with sophomore halfback Bobby Marlowe doing the honors. 44 yards, and then Marlowe slides across to make it 9-7 in favor of Alabama. With the clock running out, the Volunteers start a last-minute rally. Al Payne picks up speed and yardage and is only caught from behind on the five by Bama's Jack Brown. And with two minutes left to play, Kozar scores again, and Tennessee wins 14 to 9. It's Major uncorking along when taken on the run by Stevens, and Steven romps the rest of the way to put Illinois ahead of the favored Buckeyes. 73,000 fans see the Buckeyes hit the comeback trail. Ohio State's Genowitz fumbles the ball, and Lynch recovers for Illinois. Seven plays later, including this beautifully executed reverse, with Stevens ending up with the ball, the Fighting Illini have practically clinched the Big Ten Rose Bowl bid. Held on the ground, Illinois takes to the air. Major two, Klimak to put the ball on the Buckeyes five. Major back now for another pass. He looks for Stevens, who makes it. It's 14 to 7 for Illinois. In the Purdue Notre Dame struggle, Dale Samuels whips a pass to Neil Schmidt that clicks off 34 yards. John Caresti's dents the Irish line for the touchdown. Again, Dale Samuels lets fly with a pass that carries 34 yards into the arms of Schmidt. And Purdue amazingly leads Notre Dame 21 to nothing. At intermission, coach Frank Leahy offers a final bit of encouragement. And now it's Bill Klezak fumbling, and Notre Dame's Dick Cutter recovers on the Boilermaker 10 yard line. Bob Williams rifles a fast one to Jim Mutcheller, and Notre Dame scores. The Fighting Irish are really fighting. Purdue pounds back, and Samuels passes to Maccioli for 43 yards and a touchdown as Notre Dame's spectacular winning streak of 39 games comes to an end. Purdue 28, Notre Dame 14. <laughs> California is far from sunny for the Army-Stanford game. In fact, it's a picture of rain and gloom at Palo Alto, where, for two rain-soaked periods, it's a hard-fought, scoreless struggle between the Indians of Stanford and the unbeaten cadets from West Point. But the cadets prove they can operate no matter what the conditions are, and passes turn the tide against Stanford. Determined to maintain their long, unbeaten streak, the Black Knights take to the air again in the deepening gloom. Bob Blake gets it away to Don Fulberg, who keeps going to give Army a 7-0 victory. <laughs> Off to 
to a fast start. Quarterback Gerald Crawford on Lembers, and his target is Bob McCoy. And a touchdown for the Engineers. 37,000 fans now see the Kentucky Wildcats strike back. Babe Gurley gets together with Clayton Webb, and the latter keeps it going from there. Good for first down. Webb again now, catching takeoff balance as he races for the payoff strike. And that ties up the score. Kentucky had an aerial artist in Babe Perilli. Sarank is the receiver this time. And back for another pass goes Perilli. Fires to Harry Jones, and Harry steps over for the six points. Second half fireworks for the Wildcats are highlighted by this touchdown romp by halfback Shorty Jamerson. Jamerson's jaunt covers 54 yards, and Kentucky remains undefeated. Staging a walkaway victory, Carl Sturtz, Ohio State quarterback, takes the opening kickoff. And he gets loose for the outstanding run of the game from his two. Sturts carries it 94 yards all the way to the Northwestern four. A bang up beginning for the Buckeyes who draw first blood when Gandy dives across. Only a few minutes after that first tally, the Buckeyes do it again. A fumble by Northwestern sets the stage for second Ohio State drive. Now here's the clincher, Walt Klebe going wide. He's still going, 44 yards in all to give the Buckeyes a 13-point lead. In the second period, Vic Genowitz limbed up. Armstrong has it, and the Buckeyes grip on the Big Ten Championship Titans. Janowitz now back for another pass to Cursillo, and Ohio State wins in a walk. Having won only two games all season, the Minis uncork a mighty upset right from the start. Bill Powers sweeps wide around the Army flank and goes for first down. A three-touchdown underdog has the nation's number two team rocked on its heels. Bob Zastro, the Minis' Husky quarterback, shoots a pass downfield for a skidding catch by Captain Tom Back. On the seven, Zastro finds a hole and sneaks through for a touchdown. Navy has beaten Army to the punch, and the stadium is filled with pandemonium. Still Navy, Zastro, two powers on a reverse that catches the West Pointers napping. Before they nail him, Powers is reeled off 22 yards, and the stage is set for another Navy score. Zastro now back for a pass, looking for a receiver, taking his time. 30 yards into the end zone, and Jim Ballinger's catch is rule complete. That makes it 14 to nothing for the Sailors, and the joint is really jumping on one side of the field. The cadets find something to cheer about as Bobby Zastro, fading back to pass, is trapped and dumped in the end zone by the determined West Pointers. With the middies leading 14 to two, the clock runs out. It's all Navy in the greatest upset of a great season. <laughs> 